Arov Shevach Vahodah Lakodesh Baruch Hu. We present to you the weekly halacha series presented by Shem Tov Youth. My name is Mayor Goldberg. I am the Rav Machsha for the Vatikashras of Flatbush. This series will encompass a number of topics. We will start off with a series of lectures on kashras related items. We will eventually move into other areas of kashras, practical and uh, practical halacha and kashras as well. Um, what we wanted to do today is, is start with a general overview on kashras. I present to you a magazine called Kashras Magazine, which is published yearly. Uh, this is the current issue of Kashras Magazine, and uh, it's a very fine publication that gives a summary of, in this case, 1,063 hechsherim that are known worldwide. Uh, these hechsherim have responded to a questionnaire sent out by Kashras Magazine, giving them a little bit of background on who the Hashgacha is and who the people are that are involved in the Hashgacha. Uh, clearly, the, the magazine does not take any responsibility for Kashras, but it's a good guideline for helping us make some intelligent decisions about which products uh, we should and should not take and which hashgachas we need to look into further and not just read about them. The first thing that I wanted to discuss was just a general overview of, of, of kashras. Kashras is a very involved field because we're talking about everything from shrita, from ritual slaughter, to products that you find on the supermarket shelf, milk, all kinds of canned items. So all of these things fall under the heading of kashras. The possibilities are limitless, what we could talk about. So we're going to take one thing at a time. We're going to do this very slowly. And hopefully by the end of this series, everyone will have a better idea about what to ask and how to ask. We start our series by taking a walk down the supermarket aisle. You could think about the supermarket that you frequent. I have one in mind. And we will take a slow walk down the supermarket aisle. So the first item that we come to is the canned food item, uh, the canned food uh, shelves. Um, we come to an item, canned peas. So people will see a can of peas with a generic K on there. We won't say anything about which brand it is now. It just has a generic K. So the consumer is standing there with this can of peas in their hand, and they're saying, can I buy this? Are there any kashras issues with this? So it seems like a relatively innocuous item. You look at the ingredients, and it says peas, water, and salt. What could be terrible? All canned vegetables are cooked. And they're cooked in a machine called a retort, which is a large cooking vat. Now, sometimes retorts can be used for cooking something as innocuous as peas in a can, or it could be used for cooking something that contains non-kosher meat. We don't know. So therefore, clearly, on something as innocuous looking as a can of peas, a reliable hashkocha is necessary. Now, what does it mean when you see a generic K on a product? Whose hashgacha is a generic K? It's just a plain K that's printed on the label. Well, a generic K can be someone. It could be someone reliable. It could be someone not reliable. It could be no one. But you don't know that simply by looking at the generic K on the label. So therefore, it becomes very important for the consumer to be able to find out and track down the information about who that generic K is on that particular product. Under no circumstances should anyone accept a product with a generic K without knowing who's behind it, especially when you're talking about a product that requires a reliable hashkoch. So we also, as I said, we also come to the 1,063 number, which is an extremely overwhelming number. Among these are some national kashras agencies and national kashras symbols that we know, for example, the OU, the OK, the Chaf K, the Star K, all of these are symbols that we know, and, and I, I don't want to mention any more because we don't want to offend any kashras agency by leaving them off the list, but those are the largest and most well-known kashras agencies. So uh, it becomes very important for us to be uh, a discriminating consumer uh, and not to accept anything that appears to be kosher. If you're in doubt, do without. That's a very good policy. 
On behalf of Weekly Halacha, we wish all of our watchers, listeners, a very good week, and thank you. Thank you.